Our journey to uncover some of the world's best Muay Thai fighters has us beginning our search in Australia. Home to the highest ranked middleweight in the world, holder of nine world titles and an ambassador to the sport, it's here in Queensland, the Muay Thai capital of Australia, that we find the gunslinger, John Wayne Parr. My name is John Wayne Parr, I'm from the Gold Coast. I run the, the Boonshu Gym here on the Belly Heads. Uh, I've had the gym now for uh, 12, 13 years. Uh, I, myself, I've had 113 fights, uh, 83 wins, uh, about 38 knockouts. The reason why I fight is because it's the biggest adrenaline rush you could ever imagine. There's only you and your opponent in the ring. There's, there's no other people to rely on. Uh, there's no one else to blame if things go wrong. Uh, and it's just a, it's a healthy lifestyle as well. The, you eat healthy, you train every day, um, and it's just, it's just good times. Yeah, it's, it, What's the saying? If uh, if you're having fun at work, it's not really work. So that's that's what it is with Thai boxing as well. It's just uh, just a good buzz. Already the holder of nine world titles, there was another that the gunslinger had his sights set on. But when you live, breathe, and train in a combat sport, you more than often realise that things don't always go according to plan. I was supposed to fight Kai Hollenbeck from America, but unfortunately, in a jiu-jitsu exercise. Uh, for a bit of cross training, I put my hand the wrong way and, and snapped my finger clean in half, so, so I'm out for four months. But uh, luckily, Kim Johnson from Adelaide, he's decided to take my place. Uh, he's a really promising young prospect, and then the opportunity for him to fight Kai is um, a really big opportunity for him. And uh, fingers crossed that he can uh, do really well. And then uh, if he can get the win, that's really going to put him on the world stage and, and get him on the bigger shows maybe across the world. And there might even be a chance that uh, I might have to fight um, Kim now. My name's Kim Johnson, I fight for Rikers Gym in SA. I've had 30 fights, 22 wins, one draw and seven losses. Muay Thai is my life pretty much. I, I gave up my job a year ago to sort of, to really give it a good crack and to see how far I could get in it and to, to dedicate myself to it. So I'm not gonna look back and you know, think, oh, what if, what if I quit my job or what if this? Um, it just, it helps, it gives me a focus, it gives me a purpose, like, you know, if I'm during the day, any time during the day, I know what I've got to do because, you know, I've got to, got to sleep at this certain time for training, I've got to eat at this certain time for training, it just gives me that structure that I need and just gives me focus, Is it, it pushes me every day. It's an emotional roller coaster. It's just, Every day you want to put in your best effort and, and you sort of judge yourself on your last training so if you don't perform to say what you, what you know you can or know you should, you sort of, well me I take it, I take it sort of hard I think, you know, I guess what, what drives me to fight is and keep going is, you know, my love for Muay Thai, I want to, I want to get as good as I can at it. My trainer got a phone call from Ethan Shep, the promoter, just saying that Wayne Parr had broken his finger and, and they were looking for someone to fill in for him to fight the, the American world champion, Kai Hollenbach. So he just wanted, wanted to know if I'd take the fight. Um, it was a bit of a step up, so we had to think about it. We had to have a good think about it and you know, make sure I was ready and it was the right decision. Well, my name is Richie Elliott and the head coach at Southside Boxing Club here in Adelaide. Uh, November last year, Kim got in contact with me because uh, he had uh, a lot of big fights coming up and his, uh, his main weakness was not, not his punching, but his defence against big punchers. So uh, he got in contact with me, he just wanted me to, to go through a few techniques with him in order to be able to defend himself better against big punchers. Kim, look, he's, he's the ultimate professional. You know, it's uh, it, it, it's a thing in boxing where the, the, the fighter is a, you know, the, the coach has the joystick. 
and, and the fighter just does exactly what he's told and, and Kim is exactly like that. So, so when we put a, a game plan in, in, into place, uh, he, he can act it out. The only problem is, is he, he's got a lot of courage, so if he, get, if he gets a knock, he'll stand and trade. So we have to kind of get that out. After tailoring his techniques for his fight against Hollenbach, Kim was handed the devastating news only weeks out that Hollenbach had pulled out of his fight. We got word that he'd injured himself in training and he'd pulled out. And um, it, he asked me if I'd fight Mozzie. He's Persian and uh, he spent a lot of time in Thailand. He was on the Challenger, he's fought a lot a lot in Thailand, he's fought a lot of the top tyres and it was still going to be the same step up as Kai and so I thought why not, you know, I was, I was ready to fight Kai so why wouldn't I be ready to fight, fight him? Uh, Kim's fight against Mozzie will be his hardest fight yet. We know he's a very experienced campaigner from Thailand and he fights all the top tyres, uh, not, just, not just on the islands but in Bangkok as well. I uh, fought John Wayne Parr last year. Uh, we've, we've studied some tapes. We know he's got a good kickboxing background and he's backed it up, going to Thailand and learned the Thai way as well. He's a big, big banger. So he doesn't have the luxury of being able to wear this guy's punches. So we're working on a strategy where he never catches a shot flush. So we're working on really good lateral movement and staying out of the guy's range. <laughs> That's my problem. Your sort of ego gets involved, and you want to you want to show everyone that you can stand there and trade, but just stick to the game plan. You know, I want to be as professional as I can, and that's what I need to do to take it to the next step. I think from the outside, people would definitely see me as the underdog. He's the one that's had the big fights in the past. You know, he's, there is sometimes you doubt yourself, you think, you know, am I good enough to fight this guy, especially if you're stepping up. My name's Charlie Chow, I train at Rikers Gym. My fight record is 16 fights, 11 wins, 4 losses and 1 draw. Um, my past was, I was a troubled youth, um, I always got into trouble, you know, was into the drinking, into the drugs, um, you know, breaking the law and so forth. You are who you hang around with, and I just got caught up with some bad boys. Um, I was probably about 15, I got a serious assault. I got a uh, stab wound under my left arm, which I couldn't use my arm for about, um, about a year and a half, nearly two years, and I'm actually left-handed. So I obviously had to learn how to write right-handed. Um, that really made me appreciate what I've got. So with my history, I've become a youth worker and obviously it was just to set that example, uh, be that positive role model, mentor, and the best way to do it is obviously practice what you preach. And, and for me to, to keep coming in and grinding in at the gym just keeps me, you know, keeps me on the right track. Charlie also training hard in preparation for his fight against South Australia's Lex Hanegraaff for the WNC state title. He is no stranger to using his unruly past as even more motivation to win. Yeah, Charlie's a great guy to have around the gym because it, I feel like he's just as dedicated as me. When it comes down to the training, you know, he puts in he puts in all he can. And it's just good he's around the same weight, so it's good having someone, you know, that's that's good almost at your level that you push each other to train better. You know, if he's training well, you wanna train just as good. If he's sparring well, you wanna you wanna beat him. So there is that rivalry, but I think that's positive. You use that you wanna make that a positive, you wanna feed off each other. As the countdown to Kim's fight begins, he not only has to push his body beyond its limits, but he also begins the mental preparation that is required when getting ready for the biggest fight of his life. 
being at the peak of physical fitness isn't the only challenge a fighter must face. But the need to ensure the same commitment is put into mental preparation is paramount because once you have crossed those ropes, a fighter is on his own. Kim begins the gruelling task of cutting weight before the fight. Needing to drop at least four kilograms before weighing, he is left feeling hungry, thirsty and fatigued, but utilises this time to reflect and begin to make plans of what needs to be done when he steps in the ring. While Kim prepares in South Australia, his opponent, the Persian Moss, begins his long journey alone to Kim's hometown. With the hard work of training and cutting weight over, the fighters finally meet face to face for the first time at the weigh-in. With under 24 hours till fight night, both fighters begin putting on some much needed weight. That first meal is described by most fighters as the best meals of their lives. I'm mostly Mostafa from Iran and I'm 29 years old and I'm based in Bangkok. At the moment I live in Thailand. For the last three years I'm fighting there and my fight record is 84 fight and 66 win and 18 loss, 26 knockout. Right now I'm here in Australia. I'm gonna fight with Kim Johnson tonight and in the knees of the 40 show and I'm very looking forward to this fight and physically, mentally, everything is prepared very good for this fight. So let's see what's going to happen tonight. I'm going to make him hurt. Yeah. Let's go. Well, Kim, thanks for letting us into your change room. Kim Johnson, obviously in our semi-main event tonight, folks, taking on a very tough competitor in Mossy, fresh off a good result in the Challenger Series, beating Marco Piquet. He's a very well-rounded fighter. Of course, we didn't see him with his true potential against John Wayne Park, but he's here tonight to make a statement right in your backyard. But this is really your time to shine. It's really yeah, Mozzie's fighting style is typical Middle East. He's got a big heart. Um, he's got talent to back it up. He's had um, a fair few amateur fights and a fought as a professional in all sorts of uh, countries all over the world. And um, this is quite aggressive fighter, and I'm sure you're going to see that tonight. I think Mossy will step in the ring very confident, you know, he's fought the best and he doesn't rate Kim, to be honest with you. I don't think he rates Kim at all. I think he's coming in fairly cocky and confident, but that's that's his persona. He's a lovely guy, but he's confident and a win or a lose or a, or a loss to him is just another day at the office, but he's here to win. He's here to, to get bigger paydays and be invited back. Charlie Chow is up first for Riker's gym, taking on one of South Australia's toughest opponents, Lex Hanegraaff, for the WMC state title.
done. Anagraph locks on the clinch. Imagine yourself walking into the changing rooms. Everyone says hello, you're shaking hands, you're patting them on the back. You feel good, you feel real good. You sit down on the chair facing backwards, put your arm on the towel, the padding goes on, the bandage goes all around your hand. Your knuckles, your tongue, your wrist feels good, feels real good. You lie down on the bed, the masseuse comes in and pours toy oil all over your body. The smell of it, it smells different, it smells pure. Yeah, this is it, this is where I want to be. There's nowhere else in the world I want to be. I want to be here. You start hitting the pads. Bang, bang, bang. Your punches are sharp. They're crisp. They're powerful. They're accurate. You put your robe on. Your coach puts your monk on. on says a little prayer. You're ready now. The music blares, they call your name, the crowd goes crazy. You make your way down the ramp, it's a long walk. Like with every fight, all a fighter can do is prepare for what happens in the ring and try your best to deal with the outcome after, however it comes. Losing a fight is probably the hardest thing you're going to go through. Go through. Um, it's happened before. It's, it's something that like, I need to keep working on. It's that emotional side of fighting. 
of life, just being able to control your emotions. And that's just something I struggle with sometimes. When I got in there, just just wasn't wasn't at my potential. Wasn't what I know I can be. I mean, it's not an excuse for for losing to him because it's me as a person. That's something that's still that's a fault of mine. That's just like a bad technique, you know. It's something that I need to keep training. It's something that I've struggled with in the past and he picked up on it like he saw as soon as he, he, kicked, he kicked my leg and, and I showed him pain straight, straight away. He, he saw that. I, sh I showed that to him and that just, that just sort of just shows that I wasn't in the right mind frame because you know, you need to be poker faced. I should have. He kicked. He, sh he kicked my legs. I should have answered straight back. I should have had that fire. Not be angry, but not not let my emotions take over. Not get angry, but still bang, be sharp. Just for, I, I can't really explain. Soon as soon as Kim started on. Uh showing a little bit of uh, pain or a little bit of limping on that lead leg it was just a red flag for a bull and once he just chopped and chopped and um, yeah it was only a matter of time and, and at fourth round just um yeah just once that leg goes no matter how tough you are as soon as it gives out there's nothing you can do about it so. the night quickly turned around with one of australia's best heavyweights geared and ready to headline the show paul sawinski was set to go up against the big american steve banks This is why the crowd is here. This is who they've come to see. The main event. Big Paul Slowinski. Paul Slowinski just finishing his Ram Moy Y crew. Traditional pre fight ritual of all the Muay Thai fighters. Beautiful three punch combination. Chips away with the elbows, a sting back with elbows of his own, finishes with a low kick, beautifully done. Again oh, with the low look kick. Look at the bruising on the leg of Banks. What about that? And again. Well, Steve Banks' thighs getting squashed like a bug on the windscreen. Behind the shin of Slowinski again, chips away at it, up to the head, down to the legs, into the body, That's down goes it. Banks. That is it. Holding up the big American, 120 odd kilos, oh, ready to fall, that. and fall he does. That is over. The referee waves it away for Slowinski. Victory number 103. Thank you.